It's the sweetest name that we will ever know. To know him is to love him. To love him is to know him. Well, good morning and welcome to our great service here. Thank you, Pastor Bill and choir for those great songs. Amen. Before we do anything else, we're going to dismiss the children. They have been in here through our baptism service and our praise and worship. So children, Pastor Jim is standing at the back. If you'll go now, we appreciate it so much. And while you're going, let me remind the parents that when church is over, I know we like to stand around in fellowship, but don't forget, you have children over in the children's church, and uh, be sure and go pick up your children as soon as possible. Amen? Thank you so much. Well, this is another great day in the kingdom of God. Amen? Are you glad that you're a Christian? Amen. Amen. There's no life like the Christian life. It's the best that God has to offer because he gave us and gives us our, his best all the time. Thank you so much. In your, if this is your first time at Word of Life, will you please stop by our welcome desk out in the foyer? Take your bulletin and fill it out, and we have some gifts for you. If this is your traveling in this area, and uh, we hope that if you're back, you will come back to Word of Life and worship with us. If you live in this area and you're here for the first time, then we pray that this will become your home church. But whatever you decide, we're so delighted that you're here, and we want to welcome you here. Come on, let's welcome everyone here to Word of Life. A big welcome. Thank you so very, very much. Next Sunday is, you know, it's the first Sunday of the month, and it's Mission Sunday, and we've set it aside to make sure, and we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, to bring the items in for our missionaries when they're home to the Dorcas room that we have at our conference center and camp up in Fallen Waters. So you've seen the brochures, and the table is out there again today, and go by and pick up, uh, if you've not so far, a brochure that will indicate what you are to bring for our missionaries. We appreciate your help in doing all of this, and we thank you so, so much. Tonight, we have a special service. We're going to honor one of our own. We're going to honor um, Gerald Kuhn. I got it right here in front of me. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, is he here? Yeah, he's right here. We're going to honor him, <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you so much. We're going to ha have, we're going to gather with you tonight, okay? Thank you, Gerald. All right. He's going to receive the Gold Medal Achievement Award from Royal Rangers. So that service is at 6 tonight. That's the highest honor in Royal Rangers. There's a host of other events here at Word of Life, and we're delighted to be able to bring them to you. Each and every ministry is very busy. Providing ministry helps for you so that we can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget the National Day of Prayer coming up very, very soon. And we appreciate all your help there. I'm going to ask Pastor Kathy if she'll come and pray for us as the, mission, as the uh, ushers come. If you'll please come and we're going to receive God's tithes and our offerings at this time. It's a great way to worship him. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for your presence in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we are washed in the blood. We thank you for the covenant of new life through your son, Jesus Christ. Today we give to you, Lord, out of the abundance of our thankfulness, out of the abundance of all that we have received. We ask, Lord, that you will bless it. Will you use it, Lord? for more people to come into the kingdom of God. We ask it in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen.
that God is here, say amen. 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 He's here in a great way to we open our heart to him today. Today we have three precious little children we're going to dedicate to the Lord. If the parents will come and the friends that are here with them, we'll do that at this time. Please come. Jesus loves me This I know for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus. Greater words are spoken than Jesus loves us. That's not a, just a child's song, that's our song. God loves us, and that's why we're here today. We introduce the children and the parents to you. 
Joy Angel Bannerman. Joy means a delight and great happiness. Angel means a messenger from God. The parent's comment is this. After having three boys and not expecting any additions, God blessed us with a lovable, cheerful baby girl. We pray that Joy becomes an independent young lady who is willing to accomplish anything her heart desires and to share her joy through Christian music and spreading the Word of God. So look at this child. It's our new choir member, Brother Bill. Amen. Thank you so much. The next two are brothers. And uh, one is Brooke Nagay Belay. The other is Icy, Nagay Belay. And their parents are that they will both grow up knowing God and fully depend on God's strength. And that God will inspire them with passion and confidence to dream big for good of humanity and to act by faith. Their prayer is that there will be blessing among people and touch lives working in the area of education to open doors to a prosperous future. So, Kathy, here's one of your educators for the future. Two of them. Amen. Let's stand together, and we're going to stretch our hand towards these as we pray. As you know, in our church, we do not baptize babies. We believe that baptism is an outward sign of an inward belief, such as we had at the beginning of our service today. After the child accepts the Lord knowingly, then we will baptize him in water. At that time, we do what we believe is a biblical practice because when little Samuel was little, Hannah brought him to Eli the priest and they kept him in the temple and he served God the rest of his life. When Jesus became of age, Mary and Joseph brought him to the temple. Simeon took him in his arms and blessed him and said, Mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we're going to pray together that God will be with these children in a very, very special way. Please pray with us. Father, we look to you today because you are our great God. And I pray that you will come in a very special way and reveal yourselves to these parents. Help them to realize that the main way that they teach their children is by example. Example in prayer, example in reading God's Word, example of getting together to study God's Word in church and other places as they will know you in a better way. I pray that you would lead and guide them by the power of your Spirit. Day by day, may they grow in you and become the young men and women that you've called them to be. Bless them, I pray. This time we dedicate to you, little Joy Angel Bannerman. We dedicate to you, Brock Nagay Belay. We dedicate to you, Icy Nagay Belay. I pray, Lord, that the angels of heaven will surround them, that you'll be with them in a very special way. So we dedicate them to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to give a certificate to the parents. There's two things in this. Parents, Look here and listen to me. There are two things in this envelope. One is a dedication certificate. The other is a letter that is addressed to your child. When they become of age, we want you to read it to them. It mentions that this day you brought them before the church and family and friends and dedicated them to the Lord. The other is a certificate. We also have the first New Testament for each of them. Then we always give three flowers. The white carnation is typical of the purity of motherhood. The red carnation of the courage of fatherhood. And little rosebud being opened day by day to become what God wants us to be is typical of the little child. Parents, if you take this rosebud and try to open it up, you're gonna make a mess of it. 
But if you allow God to do it day by day and step by step, the rose will open up and be a beautiful rose like your child who grew up in God's plan and God's purpose. Thank you so much, and God bless you and your families. Today is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means it's what? Miracle Sunday. How many need a miracle? Okay, you need a miracle. The church needs a miracle. So today, we're going to give you what we believe is a biblical practice. And I believe that God will honor it as we do what I feel today God would have us to do. As you know, our church needs some buses and vans. The ones we have are getting old. And sometimes they don't make it like we don't make it. But I believe that God will help us to supply that as we go along step by step. But today's offering is not for us. Today is going to help a church in Ethiopia buy a new bus. Amen. Brother Amen. Walter and I plan Amen. to go there in July. We want to present them with an offering. And today we're going to receive an offering for the church in Ethiopia Believing the principle of each of us is the principle of the church also, give, and it shall be given. So if you will help us today and be a part of the prayers of this church. They've been fasting and praying. They've been eating only one meal a day to save the money to try to buy the bus. And today you and I can help them with God's grace and God's help. So please prepare to do that. Make your checks out to Word of Life, Market bus for Ethiopia, and we'll make sure that the money gets there in order to help them out. Amen. That's the way God works. Amen. Let's prove him again in our life as a church today to see what God will do. Father, we pray that you would bless in this offering today. Thank you, Lord, for these precious people who have been fasting and praying, not eating meals in order that they might bring more people to you. And I pray today that you would help each of us as we're building the kingdom of God around the world today, that others might know you as their Lord and Savior. Bless in this offering and meet the need, I pray, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you as you give.
take our failures, you take our weakness, you set your treasure in jars of clay, so take this heart, Lord, I'll be your vessel, the world to another hand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of great talent here, and we have uh, every year a, a, a ministry called Fine Arts, where our youth have an opportunity to come together and present their talents that God has given them. And when they vote, they're voted on, they're judged and voted on, and, and they can move on to to higher ground, to finals, national finals. And um, Gerald, come on up here, Gerald. This is Gerald Coons, uh, which I introduced a while ago. He's going to be receiving an award tonight. And uh, this, this year they had a category for the first time. Yes. It was comedy, okay? So Gerald's a comedian, all right? <laughs> yeah, moving right in my footsteps. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to ask uh, Gerald to give his, uh, his well, you can use this mic here, give us your uh, comedy routine, if you will, at this time. Will you do that? Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. All right. All right. So how's everyone doing today? Good. Fine. Well, you know, I'm not doing so well. You want to know why I'm not doing so well? Why? Because no one ever told me that the Float app, the Float app, wouldn't make my phone float after I threw it in the ocean. Uh, one thing I don't understand is ADHD. Like, how can getting distracted be a medical problem? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, I got it. So uh, I was reading uh, in the Bible, and I found one time in the Gospels that people couldn't arrest Jesus simply because it was not his time yet. So I was imagining 
uh, they couldn't arrest Jesus simply because it wasn't his time yet. So I was imagining what if Jesus were here in like modern day and he had to attend jury duty, he'd be all like, it's not my time yet. Yeah, so you know, I uh, I uh, I read the Bible. I pray. Uh, one time, I was praying, and my sister she was playing music in the background, so it got a little confusing. So I was talking to God, right? I was like, "Dear God, thank you for all your love and your Son Jesus Christ. Please bless my life because life life is a highway, and I want to ride it all night long. So if you're going my way, then I want to ride it all night long." Gimme, 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 yeah. Gimme, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember where I was. All right. Um, gimme, gimme, gimme. Give me a second. I, I know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, one thing I learned about prayer. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one thing I learned about prayer is that it does not help at all when your eyes are not closed. Because while everyone else's eyes are closed, you're going to be the only one looking at your watch. Like, I'm pretty sure God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit know what time the game come on tonight. No, but uh, getting distracted in prayer is very common in the church. And by church, I mean me. Um, no, I mean, it can happen to a person. All right, let me, let me uh, put you in the scene, all right? I need everyone to imagine this, all right? You're in the middle of prayer group, and suddenly your eyes are wide open. You're looking at everyone while their eyes are closed, and then you see your friend in prayer group. You remember something you have to tell him, but you wait until after prayer because you don't want to get distracted. And then the prayer finally ends when the leader says, with the blessing of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all God's children say, said amen. Hey, your car got towed while we were praying. I probably should have said something, <laughs> um, but I didn't want to get distracted. Um, it's not done yet. Um, so I've been talking about prayer and reading the Bible, so now I'm going to switch it up. I think the creation of Diet Coke is the worst thing we could have done to ourselves. I'll say, and here's why. Hello, I'd like to place an order. Okay, is this for yourself? Yes, can I have three large pizzas? Um, it's it's uh, 2016, not 1985. Uh, can I have three large pizzas? Uh, garlic breadsticks, 24-piece spicy buffalo wings, uh, 10 inch bacon cheese sticks, 12 chicken poppers, uh, cookie cake thing, whatever it is, uh, another large pizza. And then can I have a liter of Diet Coke? I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> so uh, you know that game show Jeopardy, uh, there's an app for Jeopardy, the game show, that'll help you succeed in answering the questions. It's called college. Like, that's one thing I'll understand. Like, how are you going to make a game show that makes everyone watching feel stupid except for the people playing it? It's like chess. Uh, where am I now? <laughs> All right, so another thing I don't like is when my sister, she's, when she's not watching TV, but she says she is. Like, she would be on her phone and her laptop at the same time, and I would want to change the channel. She was like, no, I was watching that. I'm like, she could take all her stuff, go up to her room, lock the door, and then I think to myself, okay, not to waste electricity, let me turn the, let me turn the TV out. She was like, hey, I was watching that. It's like, <laughs> she could tell me she's going over to her friend's house. I'll be like, like she's gonna be there for like an hour or so. I'm like, okay, let me, uh, let me time to watch some NFL. Dun, 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 Uh, hello? I was watching that. <laughs> Where are you? 
So I got so sick of it, I got annoyed. I was like, all right, I'm sick of it. This is the last straw. I'm not dealing with this anymore. The very next time I walk someone's dog, I'm going to say, I'm sorry, you're, I'm sorry, ma'am, that your dog got ran over by the ice cream truck, but it's mainly my sister's fault because, you see, she was watching it. <laughs> all right, this is the last one. Um, Uh, so uh, one thing I come to know is that people riot about everything. You know, uh, people riot, like if a black person dies at the hands of a police officer, there's a riot. If um, a sports team loses a national championship game, there's a riot. Unfair taxes, there's a riot. Teachers not getting higher pay because they come to realize that they're teachers. There's a riot. So I bet McDonald's closed down there'd be a riot. Like, people would be yelling at the police like, hey, I have a right to be unhealthy. <laughs> the, the police would be saying to everyone, hey, everyone calm down. There's still Burger King. There's still Wendy's. There's still Subway. They'll be like, no, we already know what's in their food. Thank you for laughing at my joke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gerald. Amen. Okay. You know, you know, the reason we did that is because the Bible says that laughter is good medicine. Amen. Every time I feel bad, I go look in the mirror. All right. <laughs> Let's stand and move about and greet someone. Amen. Thank you so much. Please find your places. And while you're doing that, please watch this video.
Father, we're thankful today that those words come from your eternal word, forever settled in heaven. They are life to our soul today. We thank you, Lord, that you're a God of a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. You don't give up on us unless we give up on you. So I pray, Lord, that you would lead and guide by your spirit today. Find us where we are and help us to become the individual that you've planned for us to be. Grant it, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. My message today is the God of second chances. We're going to use Peter and a few of the disciples' examples. There are several scriptures we're going to be reading, so please pay attention. John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17 is an example of Peter getting a second chance. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. This is an account of Jesus' appearance after his resurrection. He told the disciples to go to Galilee, and there he would show himself unto them. And one of the main ones that are there that Jesus said, go, or rather go tell the disciples and Peter that I will meet them by the Sea of Galilee. I believe there's a reason why he said, and Peter, because Peter had just denied that the Lord Jesus Christ and said they didn't even know anything about him or never knew him. All that time, the time that Jesus was in the grave, After the resurrection, although Jesus met them up by Galilee, I believe there was a cry in Peter's heart, like there is in your heart and in mine. The Lord, give me another chance, and I'll stand up for you. I'm so sorry, Lord, that I did that. I wish I could do it all over. In the movie City Slickers, Bill Crystal's character says that life is a do-over. When kids are playing, they say something like this, hey, you messed up, you get a do-over. And the Bible talks over and over about second chances that God gave from the book of Genesis all the way through to Revelation of those that he gave another chance. So today I want to encourage you, if you're discouraged because of something you've done, if you feel that you've walked the back on your, turned your back on God, and walked away from him. If in your marriage you feel that you've failed, I want you to know today that God gives second, third, fourth, whatever chances you need, and God never gives up on you unless you give up on him. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand. But then read Matthew chapter 26. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another man maid saw him, and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. 
Then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. When Jesus died, the disciples lost all hope. They had heard all of Jesus' teachings, but when Jesus died, his teachings seemed to die with him. They were lost, like sheep without a shepherd. I wonder how Peter must have felt all those times after the crucifixion, up until the resurrection and the time when Jesus met them by the Sea of Galilee. You remember what happened. Jesus had predicted that Peter would deny him, but Peter said, Lord, I'll never do it. Though everyone denies you, I will always stand with you, and I will never, never betray you. Then Peter did things that got crazy. Peter absolutely denied that he would ever, or denied the fact that he would deny him, but he did the very thing that he said he would not do. Jesus was about to be crucified. The whole city was in an uproar. Several people came to Peter and claimed that he was with Jesus. Peter could see what was happening to Jesus, and he didn't want any of that, so he denied it. The rooster crowed, and then Peter remembered, and the Bible says that he went out and he wept bitterly. Why did I do it? The one that loved me, the one that gave so much for me, but now I have denied him. The scripture tells us Peter wept bitterly. He was beside himself in misery. He had blown it, and then Jesus died. In the midst of the tears, he probably wished for a second chance. If only I could have another opportunity, he probably said, I will not deny him, but I'll stand up for him. But then, on Easter morning, Mary told him the tomb was empty. He, Mary, and John ran to the tomb. Perhaps T. Peter ran as fast as he could to get there. But Peter dared to hope if he could only have another chance. Later, he sees Jesus face to face. Jesus gives him a threefold opportunity to express his love to him because he denied him three times. Now there's three times. When Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? John chapter 21. So when they had dined, Jesus said, Simon to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Three times with different Greek words, Jesus asked the question, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me like a brother loves a brother? Do you love me like a parent loves a child? Or do you love me with a godly love, a love without anything returning, but do you love me with all of your heart? Peter was challenged by these words, but Jesus is challenging Peter to let him know that he still loves him. There's another man that I want to mention to you today that got a second chance. Judas got another chance. Matthew 26. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. 
And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Judas was one of the twelve. He was with Jesus the three years of his ministry. He heard him teach. He saw him work miracles. All the different things that happened in Judas' life, but in the end, when they were about to capture Jesus, he was delusioned in his mind and wondered if Christ was really the man that he said he would be. He had sold his Savior for 30 pieces of silver. Later on, he felt so bad about it that he brought the money back and he threw it down at the, at the Sadducees and the Pharisees' feet and said, Take it back, for I have betrayed innocent blood. But what would Judas do with the second chance that God gave him? I believe that perhaps in the upper room, if Judas had repented, or even after he had sold his Savior and brought the money back, somehow Judas could not fathom the love and the grace and the forgiveness of God himself. So he goes out and he commits suicide, and after that there is no more chances. For the Bible says, it is appointed the man wants to die, but after that comes the judgment. Why could not Judas fathom the great grace of God? Why did he not realize that Jesus came for that very reason? that he might forgive us of our failures and our sins and our shortcoming. But somehow Judas did not accept the second chance. There's another disciple that Jesus gave another chance, and he is known as Thomas. If I mentioned to you Thomas like I did a while ago, what did you think? What do you think? Yes, the doubter. That's all we think of, doubting Thomas. But I want you to know that God gave Thomas another chance. Now usually when we miss church for one thing or another, whatever it might be, that's the time in church that God comes down by his mighty power and somebody says, wow, you should have been in church today. Look what God has done. Well, Thomas was kind of like that. I don't really know why he stayed away from the together the disciples that day. But that day they gathered together, Jesus appeared in the midst of them, and he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. But Thomas wasn't there. I believe somehow they found Thomas and said, Thomas, we don't know why you didn't make it to the gathering last week, but we met Jesus. He's alive. And Thomas said, Lest I see the nail prints in his hand, lest I reach hither my hand and thrust it in his side, I cannot believe. Jesus gave him that chance. Brother Dan, read what it says. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Amen. Eight days Thomas struggled with his doubts. Is Jesus alive? Or did they steal him away? Is he still in the tomb or has he risen from the dead? 
These are questions that Thomas struggled with for eight days. The eighth day, they were gathered together in church. Thomas said today, I'm not gonna miss church. I don't care if we have a birthday party. I don't care if my uncle's coming. I'm going to church. And I like that kind of spirit because that's the spirit I was raised with. Didn't matter if we were getting company from 100 miles away. They knew when to come. Either they came early and went to church with us, or they waited until after church, and then we got together. Don't we make a whole lot of excuses for not attending God's house? The Bible says the closer we come to the coming of the Lord, the more we should assemble ourselves together. There's something that happens in corporate worship that happens in no other way in our life as we gather together and hear the testimonies of what God has done, as we sing the praises of worship, as Brother Bill leads us in a beautiful way into the throne of God, and we recognize that God is here. He's here to save. He's here to heal. Give him a great big hand. I suppose today we would say Thomas was from what state? Missouri, yes. City of doubt. I won't believe unless I see. Jesus came and showed Thomas the signs that he demanded. As he appeared in the room, right away he singles out Thomas. Thomas, see the prints of my hand? Reach into your hand, thrust it in my side. Don't be a doubter but be a believer. Now I want you to hear the words of Thomas. All he says is, my Lord and my God. Now he knows that Jesus is Lord over every situation of life. He knows that he is not in the tomb. He is raised from the dead, and today he is alive. Praise God. And Jesus said to him, you have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those more blessed because they have believed, but they have never seen. I've never seen Jesus walking on earth, but I believe that he did. I never seen him crucified. I never seen him buried in a grave, but I believe that he was. I believe that he ascended back to the Father. I believe that he's coming again. And you and I are looking for him. We're going to be caught up together in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Give the Lord a big hand. Jesus is coming. But there are two more of the disciples that I want to mention to you. They are known as the sons of thunder. They also got a second chance. Mark 10, 35. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized, with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand, and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. This story is recorded twice in the Bible, once by another apostle, and they're talking about their mother coming with them. So evidently this is a family thing that they got together, and the mother always desires the highest place for their children, right? Sure, if we don't, there's something wrong with us. We want them to achieve in life. So the mother comes and the one writer says that she makes a request. 
Lord, when you come in your kingdom, can one of my sons sit on the right hand and the other sit on the left? And Jesus said, that's not for me to decide. It's up to you. Are you willing to drink of the baptism I've drunk in? Are you willing to suffer the things that I have suffered? That's up to you to prove. Are you willing to do it? Why do you want such great honors? The other disciples listened to this. And they were furious at what these two were asking. Eventually, those 12 or those 11 disciples were filled with the power of the Spirit on Pentecost, at Pentecost Day. They ended up drinking of the cup that Jesus drank of. Instead of being puffed in, up in pride, James was martyred for his faith. You recall he was put in prison, then they had him killed, Peter was still in prison, Peter got out, but James did not get out. We believe he was pastor of the church in Jerusalem at the time, but he was martyred and became the first martyr at this time for the gospel of Jesus Christ. John ended up spending the remainder of his life on a lonely island all by himself. When Jesus died, all these thoughts are going back to the minds of Peter, James, and John, they were known as the sons of thunder. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ means that James and John got another chance. Amen. It means that you and I get another chance. And another chance. And another chance. Why? Because God never gives up on you or me until we give up on God. Give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> so today I want you to know that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most proven fact of all history. Jesus is not in a grave. Jesus arose from the grave, ascended back into the Father, seated today at the right hand of the Father, and he's coming again. And I wonder when we think of all these disciples or different ones, who associated with Jesus while he was here on earth, which one do you relate to the best? Are you like Peter, who denied the Lord but later expressed his love for Jesus? Or maybe you're like Thomas. One time you doubted, but when you seen the Lord, you cried out, my Lord, and my God. Maybe you can identify with James and John. You wanted the position of glory and honor. You let your pride get in the way. But today I want you to know that whatever it might be, you get another chance. I get another chance. Give the Lord a big hand. Or maybe in your mind today you can identify with Judas. Why did Judas betray him? Why did he weep bitterly? Why did he throw the money down and say, I won't have anything to do with this? Take your money back. But today I want you to know that God's grace reaches down to each and every individual wherever you find yourself today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Listen to the words of this beautiful song of Jesus standing today and wanting you to open your heart and let him come in. The writer says time after time, he has waited before, and now he is waiting again to see if you are willing to open the door and let the Savior come in. If you'll take one step towards the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms 
open wide. Receive him and all your darkness will end. Within your heart, he will abide. Time after time, he has waited before and now he is waiting again to see if you are willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Listen to this song. The Savior is waiting to answer your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you. that again in just a minute, and then after that, Brother Bill's going to pick it up and sing it, but I want everybody to stand. I feel today that there are many here today that are crying in your heart, like I have cried and you have cried, God, I need another chance. I know your grace. I know your mercy, and I want to come to you today. This is nothing to be ashamed of. It's just saying, Lord, here I am. And I want to be everything that you planned for my life to be. And I thank you that you're giving me another chance. As they play it again, if that's your condition today, and I believe it's most of us that are here today, it's our condition. Maybe you were sick and God healed you. God gave you another chance. Maybe you're praying for healing today and saying, Lord, I need another chance. Extend my life like Hezekiah. I believe you today. I want us to fill this altar today. Just begin moving out while the song is being played, and then Brother Bill is going to sing it. Then we're going to all pray together. Let's make it a whole church come today. Move to the front. Move here on the platform. Let's take a step towards God, and God will take a step towards us. 
Let's play it. Start coming. Let's come. Let's come. The Savior is waiting. Is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you. Get to the front, just come and move in the aisles. Time after time, he has waited before, and now he is waiting again to see. so patient today. You still stand and you knock at our heart's door and we have to open it to let you come in. We're doing that today, Lord Jesus, because we need your grace. We need your mercy. We need your long suffering to be a part of our life today. Come in a very special way, Lord, and make yourself manifest in the lives of your people. Don't let us turn your way, Lord Jesus. Help us to invite you in our life. We need you. We need your strength. We need your healing. We need your mercy, Lord Jesus. We need your supply in our life. Hallelujah. Cry out to him today. Everybody pray. Everybody seek the face of God. Lord, we talk to you today because you are here. You're here to save. You're here to heal. You're here to supply our need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He has waited. And now. He is waiting. Yes, you are, Jesus. Again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you Hallelujah. take one step 
We believe you, Lord Jesus, the Savior, my Bring cleansing, bring healing, Lord Jesus. You'll find his arms open. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Receive him and all of your darkness will end within your heart. And now Lord. he is waiting. We open wide the doors of our heart today. Hallelujah. shoulder, the one on the right and the left, and pray for each other. Lord, we pray for each other today. Let your mighty healing power flow through the body of Christ today. Bring strength, bring new life, because you are here today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us again. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Time after time. Oh, hallelujah. before. And now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus, to see we praise if you, you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in.
love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Because He first loved me God's here today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to ask Sister Cross if she'll make her way through there and come up and up here and pray the closing prayer. While she's doing that, let me give a little update on my wife. This past week, we spent nine and a half hours in Kaiser, and they finally discovered that she had cellulitis again. So she's not here today. She's However, doing very well, she got to the place she couldn't stay awake, and so we knew that we had to take her to get, find out what was wrong, and after nine and a half or 10 hours, we made it back late on Friday night. It just takes that time, I guess, to get all the reports, and wait till they wait on everybody else, and then finally, they get to you, so we grow in grace during that time. Amen, can you say amen? So I want to tell everybody, because I know you're praying, I know you would ask, and so I'll tell you all one time, and I won't have to, to do it 1,500 times. Amen. We're going to receive God's blessing, and then Sister Cross is going to pray, and a couple of things we need to pray for today. We're going to pray for our president, pray for our military, pray for leaders around the world, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But today, those from Sierra Leone, are celebrating 55 years of independence. Amen. And that's not the end. Sierra Leone is free of Ebola. Amen. Praise God. We're grateful for God's uh, working in this way and bringing that to pass. So let's receive God's blessing. Lord, bless me. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be upon me. Keep me from the evil one. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you God's peace. And Father, these are the blessings you promised to your children. Let the peace of God rule and reign in our hearts. And we'll thank you in your wonderful name. And everybody said, give the Lord another big hand, blessing. One other thing, we want to pray for the victims of the earthquakes. Three earthquakes in Japan. I don't know, it was one or two in Ecuador. Several lives are lost, several are wounded. So let's pray that God is with them. And pray for our compassion people that are there helping them with water and food and whatever they can, especially Convoy of Hope, that God would give them the supplies that they need for this special time. Amen. Give the Lord another big hand. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for our pastor and his message today, reminding us that you are a God of a second chance and another chance and another chance and another chance. Lord, we thank you today because you love us so much, hallelujah, that you sent your son Jesus Christ to redeem us and to restore us back with you. 
And Lord, today as we gather around your altar, lifting up our lives to you, we thank you because we, we are reminded that you loved us first. Lord, we thank you for your love that abounds in us. Lord, we thank you, hallelujah, that no matter what we are going through today, we can remember that you love us. And because of your love for us, God, we are compelled to love you, God. Lord, we thank you today because out of your abundance, you have given us grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for a new life in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, and we thank you because of his love and the regeneration in us. We can seek you. We can come to you and lift up prayers for our nation. Lord, today we lift up our president to you, God. We lift up Congress to you, God. God, we pray that you will continue to work in them, God. God, just as you quake the earth, God, quake in them, God so that they will know that you love them, that you are giving them another chance to get it right with you, God. Touch them, Lord, the leaders of this nation, the leaders of the nations that we, we represent here at the altar, God. We thank you that you are giving us another chance, God. God, we pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for the peace in Israel, hallelujah the peace that only you can give God. God is not in the weapons, it's not in the struggles, but it's the peace that you give God. God, we pray for all the other prayer requests and we thank you for what you're doing in our first lady's body, God. How you're restoring her, God. God, when the doctors don't know what to do, Lord, you're doing it. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your spirit that dwells within us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today because you are incredible. Only you are awesome. Only you are magnificent. Only you receive our adoration and our exaltation and our love today, God. God, we thank you for being the great big God that you are. We, re we remember that you never sleep nor slumber. Lord, we know, hallelujah, that we are on your mind day in and day out, God. Let us live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am blessed every day of my life. I am blessed when I wake up in the morning or I lay my head to rest. I am blessed. I am blessed. Or I lay my head to rest. 